Mr. Bufuzlik, during your temporary assignment to the Enterprise as Communications Chief while our officers are away, I would appreciate you verifying the settings of the Universal Translator System installed in the Briggs cells. I will get on it right away, Commander. Thank you. Harry, did you hear? The Federation is considering rolling back the ability for colonists to leave their planets due to concerns of communicable diseases. Indeed, I hadn't heard that, Cyrano. Where do you stand on a government limiting individual freedoms? Well, Cyrano, if by limiting individual freedom you mean not allowing people the freedom to hurt others indiscriminately, the freedom to force dangerous drugs onto children, the freedom to exploit land to the ultimate detriment of the environment, then yes, I'm all for the limiting of such freedoms. But if by limiting individual freedom you mean preventing people from living their best lives by moving to wherever their hearts desire, the freedom to undertake whatever vocation suits them best, and the freedom to engage in whatever pleasure fills their souls with joy, then I am dead set against any limits on individual freedom, my good sir. This is my stand on this vital issue. I will not retreat from this position and will never compromise. Never, sir. I agree that they shouldn't limit individual rights, Harry. The colonists should have free movement to and from their colony worlds. Exactly my point, sir. Yes, Harry. I thought you would agree with me. Mr. Mudd, Mr. Jones, I happen to overhear your remarks. Yes, Mr. Spock. The argument you are employing, Mr. Mudd, is not logical. In fact, you exhibited the if by whiskey argument, a logical fallacy. I thought he was persuasive. That may seem so, Mr. Jones, but his argument is invalid. It employs a relativist or subjectivist fallacy of if by whiskey. In this rhetorical device employed in political discourse, the speaker's position is contingent on the listener's opinion. An if by whiskey argument appears, by use of doublespeak, to affirm both sides of an issue and then agrees with whichever side the listener supports. In effect, taking a position without taking a position. Statements in such arguments typically use words with strongly positive or negative connotations. Mr. Mudd, you employed this fallacy when you stated you were for and against limiting individual freedoms, depending on which side Mr. Jones would state that he was on. Yes, of course. Thank you, friend Spock. Indeed. I shall definitely endeavor to reword my statements in the future, my good sir. That would be best. Even if an argument seems to make sense, it cannot be valid unless the form is valid, and that it does not exhibit one of the logical fallacies such as, if by whiskey, a subjectivist fallacy. It's only logical. <laughs>